My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. Hello, you are welcome to episode number 67 of the 120 Days Damn Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at optical instruments. Optical instruments. Now, ladies and gentlemen, some lights are visible to the eyes. In the spectrum, you have visible lights. Even the light from the sun, you can see the light. These are visible lights or the light from your uh, bulbs, from car headlights. These lights are visible. Meanwhile, there are lights that are not visible to the eyes. You cannot see all these lights. Examples, ultraviolet lights, you can see that. Even gamma rays, you cannot see those lights. S rays, you can't see that. Microwaves, you cannot see all these lights. Infrared. So all these are not visible to the eyes. Now, you now say, okay, let us study uh, the lights visible to the eyes. The part of physics or the study of lights that are visible, perceivable to the human eye is referred to as optics. Optics. So anytime you see or hear optics, it has to do with the part of light or the visible light or lights that are visible to the eye. Light that the eyes can see. That is optics. If optics has to do with light that the eyes can see, therefore, optical instruments are instruments that can enhance photon for eye to see properly or to analyze. Optical instruments are instruments that help you to see things better, to appreciate objects better, or that help you to focus or magnify objects for analysis. That is the whole idea of optical instruments. Eyes, lenses, and magnifying glasses are examples of optical instruments. These instruments, they help process uh, photons to enhance viewing or analysis of the light. One of the things I uh, forgot to tell you is the power of lens. When you have lenses, the power of any lens is 1 over focal length. So if I give you a lens and I said that uh, the focal length is 4 over 3, what is the power of that lens? The power will simply be 1 over focal length. Power is inversely proportional to focal length. The bigger the focal length, the weaker the lens. The more the, the lesser the focal length, the more the power of the lens. And the unit of or power of lens is delta. Delptas. So power of lenses are measured in delptas. Delptas. <laughs> that is the power of lenses. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the optical instruments we shall be looking at in this episode are a simple microscope, compound microscope, modified compound microscope, modified astronomical telescope. Or you say uh, telescope under normal <laughs> adjustment, a uh, terrestrial telescope, a uh, binocular reflecting telescope, projector, then the lens camera, the human eye is an optical instrument. It sees visible light and it helps you to view objects around. Then the spherometer, these are optical instruments. And by the wayside, these are things that you should be familiar with. Far point is the most distance point the eye can focus. Now, when you see an object, you can see and appreciate this object, right? Now, your four point is the farthest distance that your eye can still focus an object. When the an object is far or farther than your far point, you will not be able to focus that object very well. Meanwhile, near point is the point nearest to the eye. At which objects can be accurately focused on the retina. Once it's more than the far, uh, near point, the object cannot focus properly on the retina and you cannot see that object well, and your eye will not be able to accommodate that object very, very well. 
the eye ring is the best position for the eyes when you are using an optical instrument when you are using all these other optical instruments the best position for your eye for view, uh, viewing that is your eye ring now how is this class going to be we are dealing with optical instruments viewing vision light so it is good that you see all these instruments i shall be display the pictures structures diagrams of all these instruments and be using voice to explain or talk about them in the background so you have dual learning learning from the pictures and you can form notes from the pictures you can see displayed then listen to my voice in the background trying to explain or say one of two things about this instrument then from what i'm explaining or what i'm saying jot down so at the end form your own brown notes and go over it again now this video is not something you watch once watch these videos as many times as possible as we all know microscope is an optical instrument now what is microscope used to uh, view it is used to view small objects there are objects you may not be able to appreciate very well because of how small they are so this microscope will help you magnify these objects we have the simple microscope and we have the compound microscope a simple microscope is an optical instrument we use for magnification of small objects to get a clear image or vision the microscope is at a small distance from the object for the magnification and hence it forms a virtual image and for virtual images the image distance is negative now, the simple microscope will help us to view very small letters and figures. Now, compound microscope. We get very large values of magnification. It gives us bigger images of small objects than the simple microscope. We use this microscope to see microscopic objects like microorganisms. The compound microscope comprises of two convex lenses. Uh, magnification will occur in both of these lenses and the components of compound microscope are simply the eyepiece the objective lens fine and rough adjustment screw as you can see let me say more on this uh, microscope the simple microscope has one converging lens with object between the principal focus and the lens image is virtual erased and magnified for simple microscope, magnifying glass or hand lens, the magnification, write it down, is equals D over F minus 1. Now, basically, magnification for a microscope or simple microscope is basically 1 plus D over F. That is it. And when you are solving for simple microscopes, the image distance is usually negative. Because the, va the image form is virtual, you take the image distance to be uh, negative. Now, this is just like a highlight. Simple microscope magnification is d over f plus one. That is the with d to be positive and with m being negative. What is d? D is called shortest shortest distance of distinct vision. Shortest distance of distinct vision <laughs> what does that mean shortest distance of distinct vision is the shortest distance from the eyes at which an object appears uh, distinct it is the shortest distance from the eye at which an object appears very clear at which a clear image of the object is formed if this is here and you cannot see a clear image of the object that means that is not distance of distinct vision a point the shortest or the closest to the eye which an object can be placed so that the image form will be clear sharp and distinct that is the shortest distance of distinct vision you will see that while we are doing calculations so these are variations of the formula the general is magnification is d over f plus one with d to be positive and magnification is negative when magnification is positive and d is negative you simply say magnification is equal d over f minus one 
Then, magnification is also image distance over focal length minus one. So these are basically one or two things you should know for calculations under simple microscope. Don't worry, we are going to solve and apply some of these formulas. So don't forget that the compound microscope has two converging lenses and the focal lengths are usually very short. For compound microscope, the object is placed between f and 2f of the objective lens. If you follow the previous video, you see f, 2f, how we are placing objects at different positions in the convex lens. Please don't study to forget and if you've forgotten, go back to the last episode. You see everything we talked about. Now, once again, for simple microscope, it has only one lens, only one convex lens. And the object is between the principal focus and the lens, which means image form will be virtual, erased, and magnified. That was the last example we gave in the previous class. The compound microscope, on the other hand, we have two converging lenses of short focal length. This object is placed between f and 2f of the objective lens. So now, question. The modified compound microscope is not something uh, that is rocket science. What you should know about the modified compound microscope is that the final image is at the near point of the eye and it is within the lens. The eyepiece is also made from combination of lenses to reduce distortion. So these are what you will be asking the exam in this case is um, where is the uh, eyepiece of the modified compound microscope made up of combination of lenses you say it is simply to reduce distortion that's what you should know for now when it comes to modified compound microscope telescope uh, on the other hand is the instrument that forms in large images of far or of far objects stars are very very mighty giant but because they are too far from us, they appear very small. So how do you see all these things? Basically, telescope. And the type of lenses that are used in telescope in order to make enlarged images are convex lenses. Convex lenses are the lenses that are used in telescope. And telescopes are basically of two types. The reflecting telescope and the refracting telescope. The telescope in which concave mirror is used to collect and focus lights are known as reflecting telescopes. And the telescope in which a convex lens is used in order to collect and focus light are known as refracting telescope. And in both telescopes, convex lenses are used in the eyepiece for the enlargement of the image. So what more should we know on that simple astronomical telescope? They have uh, two converging lens uh, lenses of long and short focal length, objective and eyepiece. The objective focal length is really greater than the eyepiece focal length. Why for compound microscope, the eyepiece focal length is greater than the objective focal length. So it is used for viewing celestial or heavenly bodies like stars, moons and planets. This is basically a past question. What of the following is used to view celestial bodies or heavenly bodies? It is the simple astronomical telescope. Now look at this. The first or objective image formed by this telescope is real, inverted and diminished. And it is at the objective focal length. Then the final image of the telescope is virtual, inverted and magnified. It is very very large and it is at the near point of the observer now the reason we don't use this telescope to in the earth or to view earthly objects is that it will form an inverted image and this is not desirable for a near object then in telescope we saw for what we call angular magnification which is ma and the formula is equals beta over alpha this is the same thing as angle subtended by the image at the eye divided by angle subtended by the object at the eye what you should know about the modified astronomical telescope or the astronomical telescope under normal adjustments is that the final image is formed at infinity 
which means it is greatly magnified. For astronomical telescope, under normal adjustment, the image is formed at dash. The final image is formed at infinity, and it is extremely magnified. So the objective focal length and the eyepiece focal length, they coincide in their axis. Then separation or distance between the lenses is the objective focal length plus eyepiece focal length, which we saw in the previous episode. We saw the image being formed at infinity and the coinciding of the two rays at the back of the lens. We saw all that. So while explaining the background, you are seeing pictures, take your mind to the things we've done before. See, compound microscope and the astronomical telescope, they have some similarities. The first one is that the eyepiece, which is also called the ocular, functions as a magnifying glass in both of these instruments. And final inverted image is produced in both instruments, and which does not matter. In a compound microscope, as it deals with tiny objects, and in astronomical telescope, as it is designed for distance or heavenly bodies and not earthly objects. They also have differences. Magnification in microscope can be lateral, that is linear, or angular with numerical value, while that of a telescope is angular. Normal microscope can have linear magnification or normal magnification. Why for telescope it is basically angle, the magnification is angular at an angle. So this is so because microscope this with near objects, while telescope this with very very far object. There's something called angular magnitude. It is the angle an object sustains at the eye. That being said, I think the next thing there is the Galilean telescope. What does that one do? The Galilean telescope is also called opera glass. It has one converging lens and one diverging lens. The converging lens in the tele Galilean telescope is called the objective lens and the diverging lens is the eyepiece. It is actually for inverting the final image. So the first image formed in the Galilean telescope is real, inverted and diminished why the final image formed is virtual, erect, and magnified. The first image formed in telescope is re-inverted and diminished, that is for the Galilean telescope, and the second image or the final image which is formed is virtual, erect, and magnified. The telescope can be used, the Galilean telescope can be used on the Earth as it forms an erect image which is appropriate for a near object. It is cheap to make, it is small in size, However, it has small field of view and poor magnification. These are the drawbacks of the Galilean telescope. Although it is cheap, but it has small field of view and it does not really magnify images much. So to find the separation of the lenses, you simply subtract the objective focal lens minus the eyepiece focal length. And magnification for Galilean telescope is the objective focal length divided by the eyepiece focal length. There is something called terrestrial te uh, telescope, that is number 7, if I am correct. This particular one has three lenses, three converging lenses, with the additional or middle lens regarded as an inverting lens. The third one that is not added is called the inverting lens. So the te this terrestrial telescope can be used on the Earth but it is not cheap to make because of its big size. It is longer and heavier than the other types of telescope. The next day is binocular. They are basically short telescopes comprising of two astronomical telescopes and each of these with two right-angled isosceles prisms between the objective and the eyepiece. The image form is re-inverted, diminished. The first image the final image is virtual erased and magnified. We have the reflecting telescope. This reflecting astronomical telescope is also called Newtonian telescope. It comprises of two concave mirrors as the objective, 
two convex lenses as the eyepiece and a plane mirror between them to reflect the primary image to one side. Radio signals from distant stars are detected nowadays by radio reflecting telescopes. We have projector, like you know already. Projector is a device for producing a magnified image to a large audience. The object is kept between the focus, that is F, and the 2F. Then a real inverted and magnified image is produced. The projector comprises of concave mirror, the condenser, slide, projector lens, heat filter, and fan. The concave mirror is placed behind the lamp. This is to reflect all the light forward. The condenser is two plano convex lenses for collecting and beaming light towards the slide for strong illumination. The slide is the object which must be inverted to produce upright image. The projection lens is to produce an enlarged and inverted image on a distance plane. The heat filter is placed before the slide to absorb the heat and prevent the slide from getting too hot or melting. We have the fan to keep down the temperature or to send a cooling drought. In projector, magnification is image height over object height. Yeah, just like we already know and we've already been doing. Then also, it uses one convex lens and the magnification is V over F minus 1. V over F minus 1 for the projector. How about the lens camera? What number are we now? Or 11? It's a device for taking photographs of objects or snapshots. This is like the camera you know. Light is admitted into the camera through an opening called the aperture. And this aperture is controlled by the diaphragm. Now, there are, the light that enters the camera is depends on the diameter of the aperture, the shutter speed, and the brightness of the object. For camera, the lens camera, the distance between the lens and the film can be varied in two ways. First is by adjusting the focusing ring for an image to be seen on the film. Second is by adjusting the screw mount on the lens for a sharp image to be seen. The human eye is an optical instrument. It enables us to view all the objects around us. It is a very complex organ. Now, looking at the structure of the human eye, you see the white protective membrane seen when you look into the eye directly. It just is a sclera. It is tough, opaque, fibrous layer of the eye. Now you see the circular part that is the iris. You see all this um, naming. The color of the eye is determined by the color of the iris. The central transparent area of the iris is the pupil. As you can see, everything is shown in the image. I am not hiding anything for you. The iris works like the shutter of the camera. It absorbs most of the light falling on it and allows it to pass through the pupil. The amount of light that enters the inner part of the eye depends on the size of the pupil. In bright light, the iris contrasts the pupil to restrict the light, whereas in a low light, it widens the pupil to admit more light into the eyes. The eye is spherical in shape. It's spherical in shape. The retina of the eye is able to detect the light and its color is because of the presence of senses known as the rods and cones. These are the senses in the retina and that is why the color is how it is. Light entering the eye is first refracted by the cornea. The refracted light is then incident on iris. The lens is just behind the iris and after refracted through the pupil falls on it and forms a sharp image. Image formation is exactly on the retina. It enables us to see the object clearly. Although the eye is beautiful in school, we have some eye defects. For example, we have the presbyopia, we have the myopia, we have the hypermetropia. 
we have astigmatism. Presbyopia is the loss of power of accommodation due to hardening or weakening of the eye lens or loss of elasticity in the ciliary muscle due to old age. Presbyopia, what does it do? What is this? It is the inability to focus near objects. It can be corrected using converging lenses. We have myopia, that is short sightedness. I treated that yesterday. <laughs> that is in the previous episode. And I told you that the lens used to correct this defect. Myopia or short sightedness is the ability to see near objects clearly and inability to see distant objects clearly. And this is usually due to long eyeball or strong eye lenses. That is short focal length. Image of distinct objects is focused in front of retina. That is myopia and it can be corrected using diverging lenses. We have hypermetropia. That is the long sightedness. That is the ability to see far or distant objects clearly. An inability to see near objects clearly due to short eyeball. We said that myopia is due to long eyeball, but hypermetropia is due to short eyeball or weak eye lens. That is long focal length. The power of lens is inversely proportional to focal length. So once the power uh, focal length is too long, the power of the lens will be small, it will get weaker. So for the hypermetropia, image of near object is focused behind the retina and we use con converging lenses to correct this. Astigmatism is the ability to see objects more clearly in one direction than the other or inability to see objects clearly in different directions. The blurring of vision is the convergence of light rays into two focal lines at right angles rather than a single focus due to the uneven curvature of the eyes or the cornea or both. Uneven curvature of the eye is one of the reasons for astigmatism. In youth, it has a greater curvature in the vertical meridian and with age, it becomes greater in the horizontal. This is why a perfect horizontal line cannot be drawn with a free hand by those having astigmatism. Now for fire sighted person, closer objects or distance objects cannot be seen clearly. It means that the image distance is negative. For near sighted person, distance objects or distance that cannot be seen clearly is image distance. So thus the image distance is negative. Oh ladies and gentlemen, that has been much and a lot. So I think that is the goal of this class. Show you a lot of images, diagram structures, and do commentary in the background while you follow and you enjoy and you just have fun and you get exposed to a lot of things. That will be it for this class. In the next episode, we shall look at calculations under these instruments. And anything I'm not able to say now or some things you don't understand now, you understand them in the next class. Thank you and don't forget to tell friends, family, everyone about the Flash Tenants YouTube channel. If you find it helpful, why not tell others? Comment on the comment box if you have questions and don't forget to get the Flash Tenants application for your studies. See you in the next episode.